In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. Luke Skywalker did the Terminator 2 speech to his kids and like cut open his arm and like pulled off <laughs> his robot head and was like, Watch out, who are you? Who are you people? Show him. <laughs> I'm a fucking Jedi. Look at my hand. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Welcome to the Voondacast, the official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast. That is involved in more Star Wars than the Star Wars themselves. <laughs> Amongst themselves. Derek's laughing at me because I'm giving Steven the fucking stink eye. Let's this see is, how he tries to control me now. This is part, part two. <coughs> <coughs> this is part two of our last Jedi. You forget that I am your equal in the darkness. Discussion. You equal in the light. Yeah, I'm fucking Rose, dark. This Rose is... to meet the light. <laughs> I'm fucking dark. I'm pissed off. <laughs> this is part two of our last Jedi discussion, and if you're wondering why Danielle is grumpy at me, it's because of part one of the last Jedi podcast. <laughs> you so gotta listen to it. Check out that part, and then you'll hear other parts of us talking about last Jedi. But for right now, we're gonna each try to continue. We're gonna try to say nine things about this movie. Nine things in, in a row. Liked. Yeah. No stopping, no discussing, just nine things we like. We should nine, yeah, nine, nine in a row. We well, three, three, three. Two, three, three, three. Okay. Try that. Because we were going for but a just, say the But thing. no discussion, it's just say no, it. No, no. Yes. yes. You wanted, the discussion me, to, after. You wanted after. me to direct, and now you're doing all the directing. You well, we're trying that? to realize you your vision. You tell me to direct, and then Fine. you... Oh, do, my God. I'm trying no. to help you realize your vision, Steve. No, you're not. Yes. You're, you're taking this over is my the vision. Day. This is the day that the you're fucking Boondicast listeners are going to hear us fight on a fucking podcast. No, no. It's going to be the fucking day, and no. they're going to get uncomfortable, and they're going to unsubscribe. No, they've so, heard it already. Yeah, you're going to fucking... They've heard it already. All right, what do you want? Three things, and you want us to talk about them for 45 minutes each? All right. No, I what just... What do you want? I want to just lead, like, you know, like we were doing, but only spend, like, five to ten minutes on each item, and then hopefully it'll be within 90 minutes. You see? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the last one was 90 minutes, about six things. Barely. Okay. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. Fine. It was also like 50 minutes on Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> and another 50 minutes on Kylo Ren. You can't stop the Because case. if you want to understand The Last Jedi, you need to understand all the other shit. So, I think that Danielle's favorite moment. Are you going to guess mine? Yeah. Fine. Danielle's favorite moment in this movie is when Kylo Ren had his shirt off. <laughs> and Ray, not even his shirt off. It's Ray seeing him with his shirt off and being like, Ugh, and like being uncomfortable. Ray, that yeah. okay? That was her favorite moment in the movie. Obviously, my favorite moment, and I guess we're starting with me. Five to ten minutes. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't I'm contain anyway, my lust to five no, to ten can't. minutes. Okay. Anyway, obviously, my favorite part of this movie was definitely the relationship between Kylo Ren and Ray from nowhere. I fucking loved it. I've been shipping it since The Force Awakens. I just really kind of kept my shipping on the DL because I never thought that they would do this. I and she didn't want to get her heart broken. I didn't want to get my heart broken, which I now Whoa. I'm terrified that I will get my heart right. broken in you episode still, nine. There's still a chance. There's still another movie, there's and I could still die inside. And you always have eight. Oh, 
yeah, I'll always have they eight. They touched hands. But if they ruin it in nine, then Not it's like just going to be terrible. Not like brothers and sisters terrible. touch hands. And... If they close the chapter on my life with sadness and then happiness, I'll be very, uh, very sad. Anyway, so like, I, I don't... I've I... also been threatened as a husband that if... Yeah. Episode nine doesn't go right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel it personally. We're gonna get, di- <laughs> we're gonna get divorced. No! No, no. Yeah. No. It just I. Okay. I. You know. Derek knows from when I was in high school, and I was a huge fan girl back then. And yeah. I, I've always taken media very seriously. Like when I love something, I get very emotionally involved in it. And I get very like obnoxious about it, and everyone has to hear about it. And I'm very like thing about it, just because it's like it really affects me, and it, I like. I sit there thinking about it, like, staring into... I've told everyone at my job that if I'm staring off into space or if I, like, laugh randomly to myself, just... just It's about Star Wars. Like, I told... Like, I was just just forget about it. It's about Star Wars. Don't ask me about it because you don't want to hear it. So, like, I have not shipped... In a long... You know, like, I I went out of, like, school... High school, and I kind of, like, that kind of faded. You know, like, I shipped a couple things, but it was never, like, as intense as when I was young and, like, in love with Buffy and all that kind of shit. Five to ten. Oh my god. Last Jedi. And so now <laughs> And you're in you're cutting into my time. It's like you fucking said, Herb Happily. Uh you had thirty seconds when you I began told talking, me, and you now told all the time you have <laughs> is up. <laughs> you told me the direction. <laughs> oh my god, can I finish? Anyway, it's been a very long time since I've been this emotionally involved in a movie and in a potential romantic relationship. Okay? And I really loved The Last Jedi, not just because of Rey and Kylo Ren, but I loved The Last Jedi. I think it was a fantastic movie. It had a wonderful message. I thought it was beautiful, poetic. It's everything that I remember loving about Star Wars. Like, these are the things that I remember loving about Star Wars. It kind of reminded me, this is why I like Star Wars. You know what I mean? And so, Rey and Kylo Ren were definitely my favorite part. All their, their, you know, the interactions between them. A lot of this stuff was actually kind of pre- predicted by people who shipped Raylo from the beginning. A lot of people wrote them off, and now it's kind of like, uh, can't write them off anymore. Because right. a lot of the people who ship Raylo are actually looking at it through the lens of the mythopoetic themes in it. Mm-hmm. Because of George Lucas, because of the story itself, and the archetypes and the tropes that they're using. And so that's why, you know... And that's another reason why I, sh- I ship them, because I actually see where the story is taking this idea that these two so, people are going to be the balance of the force. Mm-hmm. They're not just about... This is not just about the fact that I want to see them kiss or make force babies or I like that Adam Driver took his shirt off. It's really about, like, this from the beginning, the minute her and Kylo Ren began to interact, it changed the entire story. So what was your favorite Ray and Kylo Ren scene? When they say you are not alone, when they fight together... Every scene was my favorite, off. but I actually really think that I liked... The, I mean, well, uh, my top favorite moment was definitely the throne room fight scene because mm-hmm. it's gorgeous and yeah. it was basically a sex scene yeah. and um and also just like it was such a beautiful emotional moment at the end when he basically turns into Darth Darcy and he gives her the Pride and Prejudice proposal like <laughs> you know I love you but you're nothing the inferiority of your birth your rank and circumstance and she's like I'm the last man I will be prevailed upon to marry and it's all very Pride and, and Prejudice according to, to, <laughs> and to, to, to Raylo uh, to Raylo uh, what's it called Trish. Raylo Research mm-hmm one of Raylo Research. They ask the son yeah. to Raylo Research. Uh-huh. Um, one of the audition scenes that uh, that was used for Kylo Ren was directly from Pride and Prejudice. Yes, um, it was. They actually were asked to read a scene from Pride and Prejudice. So obviously, oh, yeah. that could be completely coincidental. But looking at this movie, it doesn't really fucking seem that way. You're not and yeah. they were, you know, looking for a Darth Darcy. That's why. I also said something to the effect of every guy that read for this um, in terms of young, because there were, at one point, there was going to be discussion of having an older Kylo, so they were having Hugo Weaving and some, I think Michael Fassbender were potential, but even Michael Fassbender, like, okay, but Hugo Weaving at one Hold point on, was wait. considered... Hugo Weaving? Elrond? Because at one point, they were going to do something where they were going to have mm-hmm. Kylo through different phases in his life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, like, they were going to have him older. They scrapped that idea. <coughs> they decided to do him younger. They had Michael Fassbender read. First of all, Michael Fassbender was literally Mr. Rochester in a fucking interpret, fucking Jane Eyre. <laughs> okay? And all the other guys that have that we know, you know, have read for Kylo Ren were, have all basically been romantic leads. Lee Pace, 
Mm-hmm. Famously a romantic lead. Eddie Redmayne, romantic lead. And then Adam Driver. Like, almost oh, everything man. that he's done... Lee Pace would be... So would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he's so hot. Anyway, yeah. but, like, Adam Driver, like, every, almost everything he's done, he's been a romantic interest at one yeah. point. Like, he has very done very little of his work that he doesn't have at least some romantic interest with a, with somebody. So the third so, room. So... The throne room is like my favorite, but like I think my second favorite thing I re- beside like well my hand the hand holding, but I actually really like that scene where she she's in the rain. I love that mm-hmm. scene, and I started to appreciate it more just because of how like interesting it was and sensual and like kind of an overtly sexual. Yeah, but in a very unexpected way, and I and I also thought it was a very it, the way they did it was really cool the way they used the piano at the end this kind of like ominous but yet mysterious kind of like that little piano riff when he right. like wipes his hand in the water and I also kind of love because that's the moment when her perception of him changes mm. you know what I mean because she goes into it going murder a snake you know you're gonna pay for what you did mm-hmm. and then and she he, calls him a monster she calls him a monster and he says yes I am and he's like yes I am and then he his face like you can see like he's the master of fucking mm. micro expressions. Like also, I don't understand. The, the, like his face changes and he becomes sad, and like that throws her. The, the the amazing thing too about all the Ray and Kylo scenes is that they did it in a very like uh, a very an extremely new way, but it's built on like this classic filmmaking trope. Mm-hmm. So all of their like force bond stuff is all dependent on. Like line of sight and like yep. the field of view and how when you cross cut yeah. between two people you create this line of sight. So they depended on that line of sight only in the force bonds. Okay, mm. so that they're both in two different places, but you see they're clearly speaking to each other, and then that makes it like all the more you know epic when they finally are I in know. the and same it's just, space. And it's so exactly through the force, and it's like in that would be the way they would have done it in the 80s too, you yeah. know? Because yeah. it's cheaper and it just, it makes sense. No, and, and the way that they built up the tension between them, like that they spent so much time having to interact without having, being able to interact. So finally when they come together, that throne room scene is basically like a sexual release of all this pent up shit between yeah. them yeah. because it's like, oh my God, we've built to this. What are we doing? What's going on? And that's why it's like, it's so tra- it's such an amazing romantic tragedy and a lot and like it's a lot of media publications have seen this vice news actually had a really great article about it um about how this is a wonderful romantic tragedy mm-hmm. and that is there anything more been more desperately romantic than the way he proposed to her at the end of that fucking scene like like it's just it is a romantic tragedy because it's like you think this moment is coming and you think it's going to go one way and just like Luke says, this is not going to go the way you think and it mm-hmm. goes another way and it's so heart-wrenching because you they you walk away from this movie, you know they're not done with each other. Like, definitely right. not. And for people who ship Raylo, we, you know, and, and even people who read a lot into the myth of poetry, they're like, you know, guys, don't stress out. This is actually going to end happy. But even st- but what we really do- but at the end of the day we don't know for sure what they're going to do. So it's like you walk away from this like with this aching feeling of like what is going to happen between these two characters because we know something has to happen. There is still a final confrontation. There is still a final meeting, a moment. Something is going to happen, and we don't know what it is. And it's just tragic because I like every time I've seen this movie, people in the theater cheer when they fight together right Mm, and then when he turns and says i want to be supreme leader to her people get fuck i disappoint you can feel it in the room they're like oh Mm. fuck you know like that is not a villain anymore people want to root people want to root for him they want to root for ben solo they want ben solo to say I'm not Kylo Ren, I'm Ben Solo, and turn against. They want that. Mm-hmm. They, there, you know, there are some people who look at this very black and white. But like I said, I think those people are not looking at the story that they're watching. Like yeah. this story has done another nothing. another bit of Yoda wisdom. You know, you're not looking at what's, what's here, what's here. Like, and it's like everything about this guy's story, even from when JJ had it in the helm is about the pain and tragedy of who he is. Like, it's not, like, to just, to let's say episode nine is just gonna be like, 
whatever, throw it out the window, that doesn't make narrative fucking sense. Like, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, so, like, it's just, it's such a great tragedy, and I really love that, that rain, that moment. And I also, just a, a little bit of cinematic brilliance before I move, we move on. The fact that every scene they have, like, when they're in the force, in the force bond, they mirror each other, and not like themselves, but the backgrounds mirror each the, other. The rain like, wet. like the first force scene, she's in a room, and then they're both not in a room. They're both out. He's in a hallway, and she's outside. Then the second one, there's sparks raining down behind him like rain. There's rain raining on her, right? Mm. Then in the third one, he's in a dark room doing taking a shower i don't know doing whatever she's in the dark you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. then and then again in the scene in the hut the smut hut (laughs) (laughs) they she is sitting and he's sitting together you Mm -hmm. know what i mean and like he's in his own private room in a personal space and she's in a personal space because she's obviously in the the hut where she's been sleeping Mm -hmm. so it's so cool like that's the thing they spent they definitely like every aspect of their relationship was so artfully done and so mm-hmm. carefully thought out. Like you saw the care that they took to focus on every little interaction between them, the way they looked at each other, the way that they spoke to each other, and like just so much care taken to that to 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 think that we're gonna walk into episode nine and that's just gonna disappear. Right. That is a stupid thing to think. Like, I, like it's just yeah. not a smart thing to think. Especially yeah. when they ended it, like, some people think, oh, she closed the door on him. That means that it's over, like, she shut off the force bond. I'm like, that's not how the force bond works. No. Like, she doesn't even know that's that it's... That's not how the force works. That's not how the force works. <laughs> she didn't even do it the first time. She was... What was that from? I can't remember. The, the force awakens. The force awakens. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> He doesn't even remember the first movie anymore. No, yeah, that's like not how the force that's works. not how the force bond works. This is not something that they can fucking like change their phone number. Like, yeah, right. You know, like this is it's mysterious. We don't know what the fuck can happen with it. It's new and unseen in this so, universe. Like to say that they're not gonna fucking ever see each other in the, their minds again is a very stupid thing to think. My, and if they, and let's yeah, say, I can't, and let's I can't say J.J. Abrams decided no more, he would be an idiot. I can't imagine people <laughs> thinking that the, the the connection that happened between them it's in, just this, gonna in go this movie away. Is, is done now, yeah. and they've chosen their sides, and they're just gonna fight. It's over, that yeah. Sounds ri- that seems ridiculous. Yeah. It sounds Based boring, on what we too. saw. Yeah, it sounds horrible. Boring, exactly. Boring. It's boring. If you literally end episode nine as being just a black and white good guy versus bad guy movie, it's going to suck. It's gonna be. Yeah, I'm sorry, JJ. Terrible. Do you hear me? If you do that, this movie's going to suck. I think JJ knows that. I think he does too. <laughs> but I just want him to know. Yeah, my uh, one of my favorite moments of the Last Jedi, on top of you know the throne room scene for this reason. Uh, was when I watch Star Wars movies, I'm, I think about um, uh, a friend of mine who's dead now, Flip, who would loves who loves Star Wars and loves to talk about Star Wars. And the moment that I saw Luke like fishing and like hunting and like <laughs> doing like like jumping off a cliff with like a pole and stuff, and like. Ray looking at him like you're crazy, and him looking love- at her like I'm an old fucking Jedi. I've been on this island forever. I love his... I think I know what I'm doing here, I lady. love his look. You know, how her, naive are you? she's like, be careful! And he's, yeah. like, he's like, dude, I'm the most powerful Jedi in the fucking galaxy, and yeah. I've been here for years. Like, You really think I don't know what I'm fucking yeah. doing here? You think I'm just trying to fuck with you right now? <laughs> like, that and the throne room scene, like, immediately made me think of Flip, and I was like, this is what Flip wanted to see out of these yeah. movies. He wanted to see Luke Skywalker... As like a crazy, super badass <laughs> hermit who could kill and do anything. He kind of became Yoda, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he would want to see, like, you know, one of the things he, he actively told me that he was annoyed by was that in The Return of the Jedi, we saw the Imperial Guard, and they looked so dope, mm-hmm. and they were in all red, and they had these staffs, they are and so we badass. never got to see them in the original trilogy, like, fight, fight and do yeah. shit. And so to see the Praetorian Guard, like, see them for the first time, and they get to fucking 
go crazy and see like how good they actually are was extremely How badass satisfying. would it be? And now this is a very Stephen thing I'm about to say right now. Whoa. This is very like fanboyish. How badass would it be to see the Knights of Ren fight the what's it what are they called? Praetorian the, Guard. Praetorian Guard. <sighs> How badass of a fight would that be? If that's what they were, that's who that, they were training the, with oh, and shit. Oh, I mean, oh I know we can't talk about it because you're still in your, we're still doing our list, but we're gonna talk about the Knights of Ren. They better fucking bring them. Like they can't, they can't just mention them once. Oh yeah, no, they got and then throw them away. They're gonna, they're the gonna be, they, they have to be a huge. They have to be a huge part of nine, the, which is why they the were not mentioned at all in fucking eight. Like, which is, which is why Rian Johnson was like, well, they're a, they're a JJ thing. Let JJ. Ryan. Yeah. Ray Raylo Johnson said, Raylo Johnson. "I'm not going to touch him." Yeah, JJ can figure out. Because that's you were saying the other day. That's the only part of the vision that we haven't seen. That yet. we haven't seen yet is the, the and that could be the past. It could be the future. I mean, yes, he has his mask in it, but at the same time, she hadn't seen his face yet. So, like, why would she have a vision of, of him, him maskless? Face. Yeah, you know what I mean. Why so would she have that vision? Of that. So it could be the future. It could be the past. Yeah, you know? I, I, I like to assume it's the future. Yeah, I think. And, yeah, and yeah I, because they they have so specifically buried that mystery box. Like did, they yeah. have just like, and it, but it, yet they mentioned it yeah. more than once in the fucking first movie. Yeah. He yeah. says, "You're the master of the Knights of Ren," and then she has that vision with the Knights of Ren in it, and then to yeah. just literally right. just not talk about them also, at all. And yeah. where are they? And what are they doing? Also, are they dead? Yeah. Are they alive? Are but they, the one thing they did people, mention was that was important. Is that Luke said he took a handful of my students, so yes. we can assume those are the, those those are the knights, knights of Ren. Of Ren. Yeah, that's so the they're knights of Ren. they're fucking force users. Yeah, yeah. The the, the thing is, people want to throw up as like a uh, defense of the of that you know forward idea is that he destroyed his mask, but I don't understand why he can't have more than one mask. Like, oh yeah, he did. there's no reason well, why he can't three D print. The only mask. reason that I think that he's not going to be as masked is because. So much of what's riding on this situ on this these his character and the relationships is to see Adam Driver's face. I understand, but like, I, I think that clearly in the next movie he's gonna be supreme leader. Yes. I think yeah. And as because... supreme leader, it behooves him to have a mask to, have that to mask. wear a mask. Like it's it's in his benefit to not be Ben Solo as to Supreme Leader, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think guess. that'll be a big part of his, like, trying to get back to the dark, trying to connect with the dark and kill the light in him. Yeah. That'll be a big part of it. It's making possible another mask. making another mask, yeah. Like, him, like super, but they like can't, a, a but, super Kylo Ren mask. But, like, it's really important for Master them to, like, but not the, have him the in the mask when he needs to have those emotional No, beats. for like, sure. But I don't want to hear him talk about how sad he is like he sounds like this. It's hard like, to hear you. No, but the, 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 maybe the Knights of Ren <laughs> tell him to put on the mask. They're like, bro, we're supposed to be a mask, bro. What the fuck? Well, that's why I was the like, talk mentioned in the first podcast about my head cannon about how the more I think about the Knights of Ren, the fucking funnier they get to me because I legit thinking about Ben Solo in his youth at his training at his Jedi training where probably, like, half the kids hated him because yeah. he was, a, like, a little legacy child that was, like, Bleh. Um I feel like there were, like, the kids... Like, I was like, I was asking all these questions today. I was actually talking about this in my chat. In my chat, I was like, does he... When these Knights of Run join him, do, is it because they rejected Luke... They were rejecting Luke's teachings anyway? Mm-hmm. Is it because they... He, was, he gave everyone an ultimatum, join me or die... Did yeah. Snoke talk or were they to just any even of these too kids? Young to choose? But that's the thing. When you see them in her vision, they're grown up. No, I know, but I'm saying at the time, maybe they were too young to choose. But they can't be that like young because four, it's because only but six years four, have passed. I got you, but I'm saying if if you're saying that none of these other fucking kids had a fucking lightsaber, yeah, they could not be. They, it's possible they could not be old enough to fucking make a decision. They could be four years old as a four year old. But what can't I'm make trying to tell about, you is that it's impossible for them to be four years old because. Six years has passed since he reject he blew up the temple. He was twenty three when he blew up the temple. He's twenty nine now, so six years. Why has are you passed. bringing math into this? Because it's important. Because a four year old doesn't. It none of those they didn't guys. The four year old would not be would be ten, be 10 years, years old at yeah. the time that we see. And they the wouldn't be like seven six foot tall. Yeah, but they're all in masks, so you don't know how old anybody is. A, you know nothing about the Kyle of. I, a ten year old. I'm so annoyed. That you know so little about the Knights of Ren and pretend like you know everything about the Knights I'm of Ren. I'm not. I saw that I 
don't know more. It's just that I'm actually paying attention. No one attention. knows shit about the Knights of Ren. But Steven, I'm paying attention to what's been provided to us, okay. which is obviously there are like six or seven of them, and they all look like grown ass people. Whether they're male or female, we don't know. They could be male and female, or mm-hmm. all male, or all whatever. But the point is, looking at the context clues, it's not a fucking okay. four year old in a fucking for, giant axe. No. But his, for all going we know, like this leading on his fucking acts like an anime character. But That's for not all a four-year-old. We know they're not even fucking humanoid. That's possible. So they could all be aliens. aliens. We don't know. But my so point they could is, be they could but, be ten-year-old so aliens. They could be baby could aliens. Be that big. But okay, Derek. They could be baby aliens. Looking at it narratively, they're yeah. baby aliens. a bunch of ten-year-old aliens. Bundekat are... decided baby <laughs> aliens are the Knights of Red. Like this is what I'm talking. <laughs> like this is this is what I'm talking Exclusive. about. This wild, like, fucking baseless well, speculation. Well, that's because you're pulling me into the Knights of Ren zone, and I don't but know how to feel about the Knights of Ren. But you're making baseless speculation. Yeah, but you're trying to make... I just want to speculate about what we saw. Okay. So what I just... saw was a bunch of grown people no, in fucking No, in The masks. Last Jedi. In The Last Jedi, he said students. They never specified ages. People yeah. always assume exactly. students are children. Exactly. But I saw some of those bodies on the floor. They looked older than little children. He didn't... Yeah. They said that Kylo Ren killed a bunch of children. I don't think so. I think the students were older. And I actually think that would be a conscious choice that maybe Luke would make not to just pick a bunch of babies. Why would it be... Thinking. Imagine how sad it would be for Kylo. Well, Kylo the 23-year-old with a bunch of 4-year-olds. I don't know how... I hope Kylo wasn't 23, though. He was 23. We don't know that, how that long doesn't make it that much of a he's had he's this academy. Now. We don't know how long he's had this academy. Exactly. So maybe he had a bunch of 4-year-olds or a bunch of 10-year-olds or and whatever. And they grew up. And they grew up. Yeah. And, like, and also, like, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for his class of Jedi trainees... To be all like very different ages. Yeah, like it would it would, it would create a lot of tension. tension. Well, it's better for them to be Luke's all around the same age and not and not very much bonding. Luke put together the most haphazard Jedi school for what we've seen because apparently only him so and our two were the yeah. counselors. It still could have been that super unhealthy super dynamic because Luke why he, doesn't know anything that's about why family he only dynamics. Took a dozen students and Kylo. He yeah. took 13. Well, that's an unlucky okay. number right there. Right. You should have fucking already known that was not going to work out for him. He, Because he said, I took a him and a dozen students, so 13 fucking kids, all boom, 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 yeah. and started a training temple, okay? And he didn't say kids. He said students. Mm. He said students because they specifically were not giving you their age range, okay? Mm. So it's not... And I'm sorry... But it's because you assume that Kylo killed the youngling just like Anakin did. No, I don't assume No, that. but I'm saying that's an assumption. That that's an assumption because people hear the word student make. and they're thinking about 10-year-olds. They're thinking about 6-year-olds. Yeah. But I am not think. But I looked at those bodies on the floor. Some of them looked younger, but they were not little kids. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I'm also looking at the Knights of Ren, especially since he said he went with like a ha- a several a handful of my students. Those are the knights of fucking Ren. Why else would they be Well, there? also, it depends on how far into the future that vision was. Yeah, Those, or the, if it's They in could the have past, been yeah. kids when that happened, and maybe this is like another ten years or whatever. Who it's knows? It's really possible. That's the thing. You're right. We don't know. We can absolutely speculate. But just, I'm looking at it narratively from from context clues that they're most likely students that he was in school with. Right. They're a bit older, and they're a bunch of nerds. Because, yeah. like, apparently, the, the all knights, the kids that got picked on in the Jedi Academy, the knights of <laughs> no, I don't I mean, no, I'm just, I think about how fucking hilarious this is. Ben leaves the temple. This is just a funny thing. Ben leaves the fucking temple. He blows it up. He's like, whoa, well, I'm kind of, you know, and they have to like, what do they do? They fucking start their D and D anime club, all right, <laughs> and they fucking cosplay their fucking characters, all right. I'm building myself a giant weird axe sword i'm building a, one of them is like in a weird trash compactor thing i don't even know you have to look at the pictures you can post I, need them to, on the, I need to go back and you watch to look Force at this. Awakens again no no but you also you can look at anything. the visual dictionary yes you can and you need to look at the visual dictionary as well because they have pictures and drawings and concept art of them yeah. as well and they have some other speculatory things anyway but like 
There, so can you imagine these like seven nerds like <laughs> fucking custom making their fucking weapons and helmets and like and having a naming ceremony like I'm Kylo Ren and you're Doodle Ren and you're whatever the fuck Ren and I, like it's just so funny to me that like I just I don't know like I'm just imagining what we know about Ben Solo I'm imagining like nerdy kids that became a fucking yeah. like a a, tr- a, tr- a group of like murders. Right. Who, who's what is your next favorite moment, Derek, since you haven't gone yet? Next favorite? Um, damn, I should have been like thinking about this while we were... <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what I should be doing. Um, Are you looking at me? So I don't look at Derek? There's, there's, a, there's so many great comedy moments, and I feel like... There's so much, people are complaining so much about all of the snarky comedy, how there's too much snarky comedy or whatever, which I think is ridiculous because these movies have always had, except for the prequels, kind of not as much. Mm -hmm. They had shitty comedy. Yeah, pun, terrible Um, punny comedy. Yeah, right. But the original trilogy is full of snarky comedy. Laugh it up, fuzzball. You don't remember that you shit? You scruffy looking nerf herder. Right, yeah, like... exactly. Who's scruffy looking? No, but I love I, I love the comedy. I think it's really organic. It's, it's, I think part of what people, the problem that people have with the comedy is that it's very modern. It's very yeah. much a, a product of its time right now. But that would be the humor that... But that would be, yeah, exactly. right. I mean, this, the, it's, it's... Many years later from the original trilogy. And I think and the humor in the original was probably pretty modern back then. Like, Yeah, right, exactly. It she was, insulted it was kind of, him and he's like, who's scruffy looking? It was, like, a little, it was a little vaudeville. Yeah. It was what it was. But... Um, yeah, which like at the time was still something that people kind of did well, in mm-hmm. the 70s. Poe's comedic moments are very much in the same vein as they were in... The first one. The Force yeah, Awakens. Absolutely. absolutely. Like, nobody's like... Who you know? stares at the scariest dude in the galaxy and goes, who talks first? You talk first? Talk I talk first? first? I mean, come on. He's a smart-ass motherfucker. Yeah, right. Like, I love when people are like, oh, that scene was way too, mm. like, space balls. I'm like, no, it wasn't. That scene was fucking Poe Dameron, okay? Poe Dameron yeah. would go and tell General Hux and call him mm. General Hugs. And frigging set, tell your mama jokes. Plus, him, okay? the, the idea that for some reason they have so much technology in the Star Wars universe, but have yet don't have call waiting or <laughs> multiple lines with which to he send messages. Him. Like, the fact that you're putting him... Asking, saying that he's on hold the other is thing what's breaking is, the logic of Star Wars for The you. other thing about it is, all that, like, particularly that scene, like, that's the thing about the comedy in this movie, I feel, is it's all totally organic. It's yeah. all, it's all, none of it is just shoehorned in. No. It's all, it's all character development or plot development. Like, the, the thing Or with, a part the of the character. With, that's, yeah, like, yeah. character development. Right. Um, that's the, the scene with Poe. He's stalling so yeah, that he yeah. can upload the thing or whatever. He can get his weapons primed. Right, yeah. 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 And, and Leia like talking the, about her hair. The is... moment, right, yeah, like there's, all the all the Leia jokes are so Leia. They're and so perfect. Car- so they're so Fisher. perfectly, yeah. They're so Carrie Fisher, like, the yeah. cockpit. One of my favorites was the, when, uh, when they're talking to Maz and c 3 feels like, oh, it sounds like this code rip, he can do everything. Yeah. And she's like, oh, he can. Yeah, and then, and then Finn, Finn and Rose, Finn and like, Rose was just like, um. Uncom- <laughs> uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> like, because Maz is such a fucking hoe, she's like, yeah. I love it. She's yeah, like, totally. Remember, like, the first, and it goes into the first she movie, because she's like, she I like that. that. Where's my boyfriend? There. She is like, that hoe ship. Yeah, she's, she's that hoe. She is that hoe. She's flirtatious. Really. She yeah. is. She's a flirt. She loves totally. it. She's she was like that in the first old. movie, too. She's, she's a totally... thousand years old. She's a fucking flirt. She does what she wants. She's right. like, I don't give a fuck anymore. She's like, <laughs> yeah. I have to stop giving a fuck 900 years when ago. When a thousand years old, you get fucks. There's you so many give. great little, like, like facial yeah. jokes, too. Like, just facial expressions and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. But I love... I also... One of my favorite things is the two-year build-up to this epic moment. Luke takes the lightsaber... Just and he just throws, throws it. it. Yeah. <laughs> the 
two years set up for a punchline. Like, and some people got so mad about that. Why? What the oh fuck? man, of I remember. Of course this... he did that. Did I they remember... watch the movie and his character? Of I course. remember this guy. I watched a video and he said, "You <laughs> when the last movie happened, his face was so sad and so like tortured. No, it wasn't to end to like to start the movie." With him just like meh, no, and I'm it like, wasn't, it wasn't sad at first all. First of all, if it you look at it, it's the same sad. exact. He does the same exact thing in this it movie started, that he did in the last it movie. Started he started sad, he, and then this it is changed. his face. This is what he does. Ready? Watch. Yeah, and then he. He's like, "What the fuck are you yeah. doing here? What is happening right now? I don't. What I I I came here to be alone. God yeah, damn it! Exactly. <laughs> like you know. Yeah, and it's like. And also, I think an interesting point that some people have discussed or some people haven't is the potential that Luke was going to kill himself. Right, yeah. And he was, that's why he put on his ceremonial robes. Right. And that's why he was standing on a cliff. So this whole idea that he was standing on a cliff with cut off from the force, Mm -hmm. ready to die, and then all of a sudden, here comes this girl with his lightsaber, (laughs) that had to be... Irony for him of irony. He's like, oh Jesus Christ, can I just not get out of here? Of course, this fucking happened. Of course, this happened. He's 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 having the one of those conversations with the Force that people that like I have with God sometimes of like, really, yeah, really. Even this though, is, even you though couldn't even, even let me die. Even though he's not even connected to the Force, it's like, was the Force still just like I know what you're doing? Because he knows, he knows the Force did this. He yeah. knows the he Force knows did the this, force did and it. he's like. So I even knew. when I'm not and there... He plus, knew. You know he knew that was going to happen. He plus, was like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to fucking... It's, something's going to happen. It's just going to fucking... Something's going to fuck up my plan. Then, and he turns around and there she is and fucking... Oh. Very I knew it! Then in the movie, he takes off that outfit, like folds it yeah. very lovingly. And places it, yeah. yeah. Puts it away. And then no, he doesn't wear like, it again until no, he's so, going to die. Until here. he's going to die. Yeah. Which is like, if you look at that conduct clue, it's significant. Yeah. He was probably And the rest of the movie, he's in like... Fucking dark colors. Yep. He looks so morose. Mm-hmm. He looks so drab. Hermity. He's very hermit. Like, oh, yeah. Clearly, hermity. the glimpse that we got in the Force Awakens was not how Luke was hanging out all the time, cosplaying, no. fucking right. Jedi's yeah, and shit, no. hanging yeah. out there. He became a he became a very bitter, angry man mm-hmm. who was very angry at himself. He was jaded and angry at himself. Plus, a lot of self loathing. I'm yeah. I'm thankful that this movie was like. It was ultimately the right decision to give everyone blue balls about Luke in The Force Awakens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be able to take this, like, long, Journey, yeah. deep look at Luke throughout one whole movie and not have to, like, yeah. break it up into two movies and then, and you it's know. And so, like, it's cause so... Because you, you get a, like, Disney specifically... They gave us their Luke Skywalker. And they didn't give it to us in a way where we could be like... Oh, you gotta change this the next movie. Next time we see Luke, like... Disney basically delivered us their version of Luke Skywalker, like, all the way through. And now we just have to deal with it. It was, yeah, and, like... Ugh. No, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um... Sorry. No, it was, um... What was it? It was something Luke... The Force? The Force. No. Yoda? The... No, 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 no. Luke. It's Luke. It was about Luke... That he shit. Oh, yes, He's really again. good at Jedi. Danny, do you have another favorite thing? I'm on my second one, right? You're on like your fourth. Well, honey. for this podcast, you're on your second one. Yes, uh, we only need three okay. now because we're going five right, until I'm just gonna the name. Podcasts. I'm just gonna name my last two back to back so that you can just talk about whatever. Um. So you were done with this. Thank that's... you. No, 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 because it makes it easier for me. Because every time I start expounding on points, you give me the stink eye, and then I have to stop talking. That's not true. It's not a stink eye. It's Whatever. a love eye. Uh huh. Anyway, <laughs> love eye. It's a control eye. Um. So my my two other moments. Okay. So my first one was just Ray and Kylo Ren in general with all the Rayla. My second. Um. Was. Okay, strugglers. I'm gonna Leia spell. was Ooh. definitely like everything. Leia, Leia really Leia, yeah. like Leia was really. It's hard for me to watch because mm-hmm. I really miss Carrie Fisher. Yeah. And but she was so amazing and like, it it's very bittersweet because I feel like we're not 
we're not going to see that in the next movie. And mm. the third movie was supposed to be, like, her movie in terms of... Was it? Yeah. Like, that's what they were trying to do. They were doing this plan where they focused on every old legacy character, like, one for each movie. So, like, Han uh, got the first one, yeah. Luke got the second, Leia got the third. And obviously, if we're going Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, Redemption arc, you leave his mama for last because his mama's the only one he can't stab in the face. Right. <laughs> he hasn't been able to stab in the face. So it sucks because now they're going to have to retool and think about stuff and mm-hmm. whatever. And there's rumors that she recorded some stuff. And that they, they, the, her, her estate said they can use anything they've already recorded is fine. But they cannot use any CGI. Like similes. Any, mm-hmm. Yeah, like anything like and that. And they have her CGI facsimile in the tank. Like they do. They, right. they did that but they said, of like, her they said, don't do blowing it. up. Yeah. No, no, but her blowing up in that sequence. But they said, like, don't do it. because yeah, And, and it. it's just obviously, yeah, it's disrespectful. Like yeah. and yeah. and anything, but like everything. Leia Plus, everything. hypothetically, th- I believe there was like a three-hour cut of this movie. Yeah. So hypothetically, somewhere there's like twenty in minutes that to delete a Thirty scene. minutes. I would be down for that. There might be somewhere Leia. Um. Yeah. So like everything, Leia was really she, and plus the fact that Carrie Fisher, in capacity, helped Ryan to write this movie. Yeah. Like, was so fitting, and it's just it becomes so much more poignant and sad when you know that like. She didn't die until post production. So like yeah. everything they did, these were not choices they made because she died in the middle and they had yeah. to scramble. These were deliberate choices they made about her character that she show, made with them. That she made with them to show that she had the force and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And and you know, I just it's sad. Yeah, I feel I don't know. And I it feel sounded like, like she was really like excited to get to show this side of her character yeah. too. But like, as a Star Wars fan, yeah. I feel guilty. I feel like we like loved her to death. I don't know. Mm. Like, I know that she suffered from mental illness, and that's not, you know, like, it's not our fault, you know, that she had, it's not her fault she had bipolar disorder, and then she'd been suffering for forever, <laughs> but it it just feels like being thrust back into the spotlight yeah, after all these years, in, in and then releasing her memoirs, like, right after, yeah. like, The Force Awakens, where she, like, admitted all of this stuff that she'd never talked about, like her affair with Harrison but Ford and all this kind of stuff. In, it felt like she was almost like writing her in, fucking obituary in, like, as in, in front in of us. In fairness to Carrie Fisher, because I'm sure she'd tell you this herself, like she existed to the audience yeah. before she ever existed. Like yeah. before she was born, there was articles written about yeah. her oh, about yeah. to be born. Like yeah. before she was even born, she was the son of... Two hugely no, I famous know. people. I know. I just, or famous like, trauma. But that's like, the thing is, I just like we killed Carrie just... Fisher, but we were, you know, like, the, I'm not it's saying not, we, we killed, were just no, around there for not, her. It's not. It's not like we killed her. Killed like, her. Like, yeah, and I just, but I just, the and fucking I, movie industry, the yeah. fucking horrible, oppressive shit, the fucking lose fifty pounds. We need you yeah, to lose fifty like, pounds. That shit. That's what. Fucking that's what. Killed yeah, I I feel like the pressure of it just became. Too much, and, and I think they may you know, have been like, responding to the fans, but we yeah, didn't, it wasn't our fault. No, it wasn't. And that's, and that's what I'm not. Just what I'm trying to say. When I say we loved her to death, that's not what I'm trying to say. No, yeah. I just mean that like we loved her so much that like maybe in spite, you know, obviously she's a grown woman. She made her own choices. She chose to be here. She chose to do this, and we're. I'm so grateful. But it's like almost like our our rabid desire to see her become Princess Leia again. Yeah. Like it's like we, it's like it, it kind of overrode any kind of self care and kind yeah, of like totally. anything you know, and <clears throat> and I'm being presumptuous. I you know it's her personal story and whatever happened with her. But it just I don't know. It just feels like that. It just yeah. feels very like poignant that like a couple a few years after she's thrust back into the spotlight she dies and right. like they found like a cocktail of drugs in her system and yeah. all this kind of whatever so anyway yeah, um but like leia was definitely and then my third one i guess i don't know i don't really it's hard for me my third one is everything i love this whole fucking movie I... i'm sorry i love this whole fucking movie so much i really did i won't go I just... i'm not gonna spend 20 minutes on it. i'm just saying i loved everything about this movie I walked away from this having such an emotional response. I have not had such an emotional... Like, I love The Force Awakens, and I walked out of it very excited to see the next one. But, like, I waited two years and I was fine. You know, I wasn't thinking about it every day. I am going to be thinking about this movie, like, almost every single day for the next two years. I have watched it six times, and every time have gotten something emotional. I've cried almost every single time. I really emotionally connected to the story of this movie. I really emotionally connected to the story of the Skywalkers and like how, and like, and like also just like for me, 
I have always loved romance as a genre. I think that it's very disrespected because it's seen as something very female oriented and female centric. Mm -hmm. And like the idea that not just that we have a female protagonist who is a force of nature, who is so interesting and layered, but to also have a romantic story. And I know some people wouldn't like that. Like they don't like, oh, why does she have to have a romantic story? But I'm like, but when a romantic story is done well, when a female character has agency in the romantic story, it's not just a romance that exists to give her something to do. This right. romance is the center of the story. This whatever this is she has with Kylo, it's more than just a is romance. more than just romance. It's the the core tenant of the fucking story. Yeah. She is the light. He is the dark. Together they're gonna make fucking balance. And like the whole AKA whatever force babies, but not no whatever like. Life doesn't have to just be that they have that they have babies. Life could be that they create a new order. Life could mm -hmm. be that they create a new f way of existing. Not Jedi, not Sith, right. not labeled like something totally new and different. Like that's that, what I want to see. That's really... you know exactly like I just to me they are fixing what was broken by Anakin Skywalker seventy years ago or yeah. however long it's been now. Right. Okay, that is their story. I think that, that this is the end of the Skywalker trilogy, and it doesn't mean that they're going to die out and they're going to go extinct. It means that, finally, they're going to figure out a way to get balance in the Force. And, like, a lot of people talk about it being reverse Anadala, reverse Anakin and Padme. So mm. instead of Anakin being good and going bad, Kylo is bad and he'll go good, or whatever, and they'll be in the middle. And I, I, I don't know, I see that. I see a, too much story archetype and and journey <laughs> to not believe that that's very possible yeah. to happen in this story and so yeah like i to have a romance that's so significant and deep like that that means so much like i love it i love it so much a good romance will like get me through so much shit like i will ship it till yeah. i die <laughs> like, I'll ship it till I die. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, I love this yeah. movie. I know. I mean, I, I, I totally agree about that that idea of balance. And, I mean, I was, like, I was talking about this, I think, in the first podcast. About how, you know, Luke talks about, you know, after, after Jedi or whatever. That the Force was balanced for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's not actually true. Because the, the, the light was in control for a while. Mm -hmm. He calls that balance. But that's not that's actual not balance. balance. No. And I, th I feel like this could be... It's There's a huge opportunity here, I think, for them to kind of... And people might get upset about this, but I think that, that they're just... I think that's misguided, honestly. That, that they can almost, in a way, do kind of a revisionist history mm -hmm. where... The, this is the fulfilling of the mm -hmm. prophecy. Yes. That, the, that this Absol Skywalker... This is the Skywalker. This the Skywalker will yeah. actually bring balance yes. to the Force by not snuffing out the dark, exactly. not snuffing out the light, but letting them coexist. And I totally And not just that. coexist like there's light people and dark people, coexist in every person. person. Because that's the real tenet. Everybody has the potential for light and dark. Exactly. Like, Rey has never shied from that. Rey mm -hmm. definitely and embraces Luke freaks darkness. And out to when be... she does. Yeah. Luke freaks out. But yet, out. she does, she goes in. She goes still. And she's fine. She's, yeah. You know what I mean? She, like, lets that part of herself in. And who helps her be fine with it? Fucking Kylo, Kylo Ren. Because he tells her, you're not alone, neither are you. Like, if, yeah. like, I just can't understand how people watched that moment and the force theme plays over mm. them touching hands. Yeah. It's over, guys. It's not gonna happen in the next yeah, movie. It's right. fucking over. It means nothing. It's not at all significant to the plot of the last fucking movie where literally the two strongest force users are on opposite sides right now and... They at one point weren't. Yeah. No, Capulets and Montagues never get together. It's, We've seen that. I mean, it's, like, it's just <laughs> yeah, it's it's such an, but it, it's it's a willful either it's it's willful ignorance or wanting to be willfully ignorant. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you sit there and think? Well, in the next movie, she's gonna like have a romance with Finn and Poe. Right. Like what the, what fuck? the fuck? Like Where even if she doesn't that? end up with Kylo, like even if it doesn't turn out romantic or whatever, like. Where, what, what is, what service to the story does it have for her to hook up with Poe? 
Right, what? How exactly. does it service this? This is the problem. Is these people are looking at it like, well, I don't like it because I think it's weird and unhealthy, or I don't like it because of this. And I'm like, you don't have to like it, but you have to ask yourself, how does it serve the story that is being told? And nothing about her falling in love with Poe serves the story being Not told, at all. or even Finn serves the story being told. They're friends. They're friends. They're best friends. What serves the story? Her helping, her showing Ben that there is somebody out there that is not, will be by his side if he decided to turn away from a destructive, path. violent path. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they could, you know, and they could totally do that. Without the romance, like, they can be... They could. They could end up being, like, best friends yeah. or whatever. Like, they don't have to... It doesn't have to be a thing where they, like, make it out doesn't. over the Force theme. It doesn't, the even though, I mean, the sexual chemistry is so raging and wildfire. But, <clears> like, um, no, but yeah, it it doesn't. It really doesn't. It could just end with him realizing that he is not dark or light and he's something in the middle. Right, but it she, can't end with she's good, he's bad, she kills no, him. No, exactly. That's, just, that's ridiculous no. based on what we've seen so far. And also, like, I don't think it's going to end with he dies, whether redeemed or not, because I really don't feel like it would be smart to, or that something Disney, this is something that I feel like Disney will put their foot down on. You're going to kill the last Skywalker? The last Skywalker. You're not going to, you're not going to fucking kill the last Skywalker. Yeah. You're not going to do it. Unless he impregnates her with five children. Okay? <laughs> like, like, you're not going to kill the last fucking Skywalker. So if he's not going to die, like, he's got to get redeemed. Yeah, exactly. Like, otherwise, that's the most depressing ending ever. Yeah, he just, just continues being horrible. Han evil. died for nothing if he doesn't get redeemed. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's another thing, too. Han died for nothing. Han literally... Han, when Han walked up to him, Han had accepted that he would could die. Han, in that moment, when he... That's why when he said goodbye to Leia... It wasn't a goodbye of like, oh, see ya. No, it was a, I might die, yeah. and I love you, and, and I'm Solo, so sorry that this didn't go the way we thought. Han Solo has like a marginal, very, very marginal force ability. Like yeah. Like very, no, almost Piloting not, skills, yeah. Right, yeah, stuff like I you can see a little faster, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So the, the idea that he went out there knowing he, he, he could die... And the fact that he's still with him now, like yeah. Luke says, like, he probably knew, like, he, he had some idea that even if he gets killed, it would be for the best. That mm -hmm. it would, it would, it would so wound Kylo's soul that he would eventually come back. Like, Han sacri- that's why, like, some people think, oh, he pushed the button. And it's like, he may not have pushed the button physically, but he did it emotionally. You know what I mean? Mm. He put the choice on Kylo. He created the crack in the he armor. He created the crack, crack in the armor. armor. He put the choice on Kylo. He didn't want him to push the button, obviously. Like, Han wasn't like, I would love to die. It's not that. You should kill me because it's, that's going to make... It's just more that he accepted that if I die in service of my son, it would be worth it to show him... That I fucked up and I love him and I'm sorry. Like, it's just, it's been basically just been all the, the 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 these people apologizing to Ben. Yeah, it has been. It's mm -hmm. been it's been them saying the apology trilogy. It has, but it has been. It's about them. And every time he gets angry and he rejects it and he rejects it, and it's like it's a defense mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. And then like so much of what happens after. Ray, that's the thing, and that's the other thing too. One of the reasons why he gets so out of control is because for the first time in his life, he puts himself out there for Ray, and he's like, "Come with me, please." Like that, please. Like, oh my god, my brain. Like, like the please. He gets. He gets he, so, so like. He gets so when when she when she is. Like kind of starts yeah. refusing. Yeah, he gets, he's like, no, you're still holding on. Yeah, like he's like so desperate. Like, like he gets that like yeah that that angsty like that like oh no why aren't you doing the thing that I, I know you should 
do. Exactly. Like, the thing that I want. Like, there's and still he that... can't deal with it. Yeah. He's got that angst and that... Freaking... And then, yeah, and then it's like, but that's why it's so funny when people are like, oh, he's just manipulating her. I'm like, no, he's not. Like, no, he's not. He's no. not manipulating her. He wants someone to choose him with no other motivation than just they want to be with him. You know what I mean? Right. He wants her to choose. like, But that's the problem. In that moment, he chooses her. He wants her because... And he also wants all this other stuff. Yeah. You know? So, like, you know, that's the problem. He can't want all this other stuff. She doesn't want all that other stuff. She just wants, like... But even she wants something. Yes, she doesn't want her friends to die. That's a pretty good motivation. Right. But she still wants something from him. Like, she still wants him... To, like, take his hand. What are they going to do? That's the other thing. Lo- logically. What is he going to do? Skip back to the resistance? Right. Be like, hey, guys. Sorry I killed all your friends. I'm going to try and, to help you out now. Like, like, sorry. It's like, it's not. That's the thing. It's not. Kylo they're, Ren has the possibility. They're not in a place where he can just kind of, like, be amongst that. Like, yeah. Like, that's right. why. But some people think it might end Kylo with both Ren, of them going off on a way. But, from people like maybe end up on Octo. Kylo together. Ren is supreme leader. He's in yeah. charge of the he army. He is in charge now. He could end the Star War he if he just decides end to the Star yeah. War. turn yeah. off all the guns. Like yeah. Kylo Ren is in the ultimate position. Which is why of course, I every mean, AP he's said no that, one's ever been at in. the same time. If there 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 would probably be enough. General Hux would people have a No, I'm that sure would, that would mutiny against but, him. That even he couldn't overcome. That's but why hypothetically like, he could. He could do Hypothetically, this. he could do this, but I think I think set up for the next movie. If I'm J.J. Abrams and I'm looking at the details that are set up, that look that Hux gave him, Hux smells a rat. He knows mm. this chick did not kill Snoke by right. herself and six Praetorian guards by herself. Right. Okay, and then knock his and then knock his ass out and not kill him. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like if she's that powerful that she could kill yeah. Snoke six Praetorian guards and incapacitate him and she doesn't and she leaves him on the ground that's the other scene unharmed that's, that's actually not in the movie but is what she chooses speaks volumes yeah. to like yeah. the message of the movie is that she had the exact same opportunity Luke had she mm-hmm. had Kylo Ren knocked out she had his lightsaber on the floor she could have picked up that lightsaber while he was knocked out and, and I think that's taking him out and I think it's very significant but I also think universe. I think the signif- I think it's very significant what she chose to do in that moment because I think if they ever like in F9 if they tried to show what really ha- what happened in the throne room and she ignited that lightsaber then it kind of feels like okay maybe there's not as much hope for their like I don't know like you know what I mean because she like mm. even contemplated killing him I personally think she never thought about it yeah. I think she just ran. She just ran, yeah. I think she, like, just walked away. I don't know, because I feel like... It's not that I feel like she has hope that, like, oh, he's gonna turn. But the way she looked at him at the end, it was, like, she was more disappointed than she was, like, fuck off, motherfucker. Like, she was yeah. upset at him, but she wasn't, like... There was still some longing Something... There. Oh, absolutely. She, was... The way she stuck... For, if she was done with him, she would have just pressed that button. Yeah, she would have been like, ugh. But she didn't. She she saw him, and she went... And she almost, like, waited for him to say something. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Like, she did. She was, like, waiting for him to say <clears throat> something. Yeah. Like, I changed my mind, or I fucked up. But when he didn't say anything, she's like, you're just not mm, ready yet. Like, you're yeah. not ready yet. Like, we're not, we're not here. Sorry, and I gotta get these people so, out of here. So that's why I think that, like, you know, a lot of people read that as a shutout, and it's like, I... A shutout would have been, she looked at him, and she fucking slammed the door in his face, and, like, mm-hmm. that would have been it, you mm-hmm. know? So now that Danny has claimed the entirety of episode 8 as her favorite, oh. <laughs> what oh. is your favorite moment of episode 8? My favorite? I feel like I've already... That's the, you, you're good? The, the, the Holdo moment, I think. I don't think anything tops that for me. For, like... I mean... Yeah, I think... I, I feel like... I also loved the whole movie. That's the thing, like... There's not a whole bunch of, like epic Star Wars moments in this movie like there are usually with other 
with other. It's a it's a much more of a like organically unfolding movie. I think mm-hmm. there's I mean there's definitely some mm-hmm. and we've covered them, uh, the throne room and the Holdo and mm-hmm. you know, um, everything Carrie Fisher yeah. did. Uh, I do want to defend a little bit while we're recording here. Mm-hmm. The uh, people are complaining a lot about Carrie Fisher flying through space. And I just feel like people have so radically misread this moment. Because if you look, what she does is she puts her hand out toward the ship. And then she starts floating towards the ship. So I assume, I don't know, maybe other people just didn't get this or didn't didn't jump to that or whatever. Mm-hmm. But my assumption from that was she force grabbed the ship. And pulled herself in, mm-hmm. yeah. which is very different because everyone's like, oh, what force fusers can't fly and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, well, that's it not. Takes, it takes no effort. It takes zero effort to, to move, move in through through space. space. And I'm space. sorry. And I, secondly, I, force users do like force jump I just all the think time. it's so yeah. annoying to me that like, when when is the best time to manifest fucking Leia's powers? I know, right? Because we've talked about it forever. That look, why isn't Leia more force sensitive if she's force sensitive enough to like feel things and sense things? And, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and like you know, it's bullshit. Right. I think if any time it's gonna kick in, it's in a moment of crisis. Well, and, and the, in a moment where she needs to survive exactly. in order to lead this. It's a moment of crisis. Resistance. Well, plus it also speaks to like you know showing how she survived. Well, I think I think so that I think people yeah. I think people's objection is base is from the fact that to in order to move in space, no matter how powerful you are, you need a leverage point of some kind. Mm-hmm. You need something to push off of or pull on, and people people understanding that went straight to that's stupid and impossible instead of jumping to oh she must have had a leverage point. And she puts her hand out. Like, I'm not, like, reading between yeah. the lines very much here. It seems pretty clear to me that she grabbed onto the ship with her force powers and pulled mm-hmm. herself in. So I just wanted to say a little bit about yeah, that. Lay can't fight ninjas. So. I, you know what, I, I do have one more moment that I can, and it's not exactly part of the movie, but I always, every, I've seen this movie three times now, and every time I do, I... I won't. I don't leave until the in in loving memory of our princess Carrie Fisher comes up. The first time, the first time I watched the movie, um, they told us ahead of time that there's no Easter egg after the credits, so they were like, "You can mm-hmm. leave after the. It's fine." And everybody started getting up and like we're slowly shuffling out. And I was I sat and waited for a minute because I was like, "Are they gonna do a Carrie Fisher thing?" And when they did it, I I started applauding and like people people like turned around and were like oh and then everybody applauded, um, which was it, I. They did that after the first. It was, did not after the credits, but after but yeah. after like the the first the stars, yeah, the yeah, main yeah. stars. Mm-hmm. They showed all the like yeah. the big names, and then they did that, uh, and the director and stuff like that. Um, I do kind of like. I remember when I first heard that Carrie Fisher had died. And the thing that made me really, like, kind of break down and start crying a little bit is imagining, before the movie starts, seeing that. And being and that, that just, that made me break down crying in that moment. I think her And death, I kind of wish they had done it before. I think her death, her death caught me by surprise. Because... They couldn't have known. That's, that's breaking the whole concept of... Like the so Wars. if there's anybody you but, break the fucking but, uh, conventions yeah. of Star Wars for, it's, yeah. it's Carrie fucking but Fisher. The, but the introduction to a Star Wars movie is the most Star Wars thing everybody's, about Star Wars. Everybody, But that's so... the most Star Wars thing about Star Wars is the intro to Star Wars movies. That to, to interject anything into <clears> that <throat> is like... Fuck you. Yeah, but We're it used to be the the, the, the part of part of that whole thing used to be the 20th Century Fox fanfare, yeah. and yeah. 
and now they don't have that. Yeah. That that for me, growing up on Star yeah. Wars, was such a huge well, part, part of, it, of yeah. that opening. Well, they just spent fifty six billion dollars to to try to get it back. So really, <laughs> they want to. That's that's well, when they buy twentieth century they Fox, they're going to get they it get back. A new hope. Oh, they they're, get they're they get the right they get the rights to the new hope. Um, <clears throat> no, yeah, like I, you know, when Carrie Fisher died, like I feel like they could have done it after the Lucas film. They could have before, but a long time ago. When I think it was good they did it. I mean, they did it at the end. You know, like yeah. I don't know. I, I maybe they just didn't want people to like come, walk into the movie and then see that and then get emotional about that before they could start watching the actual right. movie. Right, that's kind and of. And then what's gonna happen? Especially then you're gonna po- switch to po- joking. general hugs. It's kind of like, ugh, yeah, you know, yeah. like. I remember when, when Carrie Fisher died, like, I was really caught by surprise how emotionally I took her death. Yeah. Because she's, like, one of those people that's, like, been in my life for so long and, like, the movies and shit like that. And I always thought she was really funny and I remember watching her stand-up specials and stuff. But, yeah. like, you know, it's not one of those people that's, like, you know, you're thinking about all the time. Like, oh, what's, right. you know. But, like, when she died, I really just, I think, yeah, I just got super, it was kind of like, like how, like, the, the three celebrities I've cried about, funnily enough, Robin Williams, mm. Whitney Houston, wow. and and uh, Carrie Fisher. Yeah. Whitney Houston caught me by surprise. Mm. But I think that I didn't, you know, I guess when I was young, her music really affected me. So, like, mm. I'm like, I don't know, yeah. Like, well, and I just, I loved her. She's every woman. It's but, <laughs> no, but, like, I, I didn't realize how much I love, I guess, you know, you forget how much you love somebody or how much, like, important they were to you at one point in your life. And then, like, they, yeah, but, like, those are the three people that really got to me. Like, to this day, I have trouble watching Robin Williams movies because I get <clears> really <throat> sad and I get really upset about it. And then, like, Carrie Fisher, like, she caught me totally off guard. Yeah. I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but... Yeah. Thinking, she uh, got me thinking about celebrity deaths that affected me the most. I think the 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 one celebrity death that really affected me more than any other. And it's weird because it's not. It was not at all unexpected. Mm-hmm. Was Scott Weiland? I was like, when I heard Scott Weiland died, I was like, yep. <laughs> that was sad. That's, but but was I sad. but but it, it was so sad because STP's music yeah affected me so much, especially mm-hmm. in high school. Like, I associate it with so many really, really, yeah, really emotional moments in my life. And, I like, anyone... You were the one who, like, that, got me into the Stone Temple Pilots. Right, thing, yeah, the, 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 that song Atlanta that you Yeah, yeah, oh so my much. god, I fucking love that song, too. Um, but, yeah, anybody that was, like, like, knew anything about Stone Temple Pilots and was a fan of Stone Temple Pilots knew, like, yeah, this is Yeah, this no, was he was struggling eventually. for a long time, yeah. It was so back and forth and all the time, you know, with the heroin and the Like, David and Bowie stuff. and Prince died and it made me really sad, but, like, I didn't cry. I just felt like, I felt like the the light in the world went out a bit. Yeah. And, I was, and it was more just, like, it was just the fucking shit icing on top of the shit cake of 2016. Yeah, and it was seriously. like, fuck. And then everything started falling apart. You're like, oh my god, were they holding together the fabric of the fucking right? universe? But, like, when Carrie Fisher died, I just, I, I didn't realize, like, how much, like, Princess Leia was important to me. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. it catches you off guard. And you're, yeah. like, you get really, like, holy shit. Like, yeah. Princess Leia. Like, there were so many. Princess great... Leia was the woman <clears throat> before the women, you know, yeah. like, that you were, like, oh, my God, Princess Leia. There's so many great, um, like, social media posts about it, too, tribute posts and stuff. Like, the, I remember the one that was, like, I, th- th- like a picture of Le- Leia in Force Awakens, and they're like, "This is how I will remember Leia, the general." general yeah, you know, uh, that was really powerful. And also all the little the quotes about like mental health and about body yeah. image. That fucking clip of her on like the Today Show or whatever it was, and the woman asks her about losing weight, and she just gives her this whole routine of like, "Does anybody, does anybody ask you about your body?" <laughs> She did, like, like this whole she went did like a whole like five, five minutes about it. It was so great. It was such it's, a great. It's moment. so funny because there was like a an article that I, I think it was a Rolling Stone article that Adam Driver did, and he said Carrie Fisher gave us all the best piece of advice. Like they were gonna do some like uh, cute like big press conference thing. It was like and it was all the new actors, and of course they were all kind of like freaking out. Mm-hmm. And she just like walked up to them and said, "Just pretend to be down to earth." People eat that shit up. <laughs> they love it. And then he's like, and you know what? They do. <laughs> he's like, I pretend. And they do love it when you fucking <laughs> pretend to be down to earth. Because, like, yeah, because, like, like, actors are not down to earth. They're neurotic and no, obsessed. Yeah, like, right. it constantly, like, thinking about, like, themselves and shit and all this nonsense. Like, yeah. but, yeah, like, I love that. Like, I love that. Like, that quote, like, 
because I just saw Carrie Fisher saying that to them. Yeah. Like, I could see her, like, gathering these little young actors, like, come gather around, Oscar, John, Daisy, come, come, you're too tall, bend down. Like, <laughs> I kind of just, like, see her doing that, and then just be like, just pretend we're down to Earth. They fucking eat that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite parts of The Last Jedi were Ryan Johnson based. Mm-hmm. Because this, Raylo Johnson. this Raylo Johnson. film was clearly not since A New Hope have we had a writer director put their stamp on Star Wars in such a clear, significant way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, like, no oh, other absolutely. person has absolutely. given a shit yeah. enough about Star Wars to be like to ask the question: Is why are we even fighting these yeah. Star Wars? Yeah, who is winning these Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Who is profiteering? Who is profiting? Funding, these yeah, Star Wars, who's yeah. Profiting and oh, yeah. All Star the, I mean, we like, didn't touch on it, but all I, the social justice comments. I feel oh, that yeah, the, the yeah. part of the movie that people hate on the most, <clears throat> the section where they go to Canto, Canto Bite, Bite yeah. is, so like, is the part of the section where they're trying to. It's part of the movie where they're trying to give you the medicine in, yeah. like, all, in all the sugar yeah. and all the cereal. And it goes in. It goes in with this theme know? of both sides. Yeah. There's corruption on both no. sides. Neither side is an angel. Neither mm-hmm. side is necessarily. But a devil. You're, you're triple tapped on on three main points. One, the 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 class injustice in this world is yeah. manufactured. Yeah. Right. Two, rich people are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> and so this three, is, Kanto Bite is the Marxist. We should be nice to message. think. Well, it's literally. It's uh, totally. That's uh, what it Ju- is. Julian made this great point. Our friend Julian. That it's literally like a Rosie the Riveter type character, yeah, saying how she wants to punch, punch her, her fist through the yeah. through, through all this rich elitism, you know, this, this beautiful town, yeah. And that's such a Casablanca esque line too. That's what I loved about it because Kento Bite was slightly Casablanca. Oh, totally, yeah. And so when she says, "I want to punch my fist through this whole beautiful town," it, like I could hear like Humphrey Bogart yeah. saying that. Like I liked it. I love that line. Mm-hmm. And um. And the yeah. whole... And it was also such an important thing for Finn, too, in terms of character mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. I hate when people are like, Finn didn't do anything, and I'm like, then you weren't paying a fucking and, attention. And, and the like, fact that the film turns, turns he around... He who to fight for. The, the fact that the film turns around and ends there, yeah. showing that, you know, the whole point of the movie was to instill the spark of hope in the galaxy, and that although everyone was out here fighting this big Star War... Finn actually did manage to spark some yeah. hope in this and frankly, small boy and these three and boys. And frankly, both sides kind of... I mean, the Resistance obviously is way more decimated than the First Order. Yeah. But they just lost mm-hmm. huge a huge raft of mm-hmm. ships. Mm-hmm. They lost a ton of people. Yeah. They lost their supreme leader. Yeah, they, they lo- blows, potentially yeah. lost Captain Phasma, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. fucking captain of all the fucking stormtroopers. Like... They yeah, took a big strike. You know what I think is interesting too about that last scene? Like, you have to, you ha- you can't help but wonder where those kids heard that story from. Yeah. Yeah. You well, know? obviously, has time, already spread has that time, Has time passed? When Everybody they that in the First Order is on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right. And everyone was like, hey guys, check this out. Skywalker's back. <laughs> Hashtag The Last Jedi. I think the First <laughs> Order would want to tweet that out. No. Though. It would be. It would have to be the resistance yeah. that did that. Hey, Look, hey. Skywalker. He's like filming him, like t- fighting with Kylo Ren. Also, the joy of seeing someone in a Star Wars movie playing with like, like a, a knockoff Star, yeah. Star Wars toy, That's yeah. awesome. and just him in his like alien language, yeah. like Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Oh my god, I love it. And him. you know, and everyone's eyes light up. Fun <laughs> fact: that little kid, the Force sensitive kid, broom kid. Mm-hmm. You you saw Looper, right? No, you didn't see Looper. No. <gasps> okay, never mind. He's in Looper. Unbelievable. He's the, one of the main How characters. How have you not seen fucking Looper? Of Looper. Looper is brilliant. Yeah. Looper is brilliant. It's, ter- it's it's Terminator plus the Mafia. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> Terminator plus Mafia. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I was so, wondering what, what, how, how this kid is force sensitive, where that came from, what... Well, I think the whole idea is that he spread the message that anybody could be force sensitive. That, that Luke for- did? Yeah, because he said to say that the, that this light belongs, belongs to, to the, the Jedi, Jedi is vanity, vanity. And, and it's a force, mm-hmm. it's everywhere, yeah, you well, know? Also, I think maybe the idea is also... I still believe that fucking Pad. I mean, Padme, that... Ray was like born of the force. 
Like, Four I don't know. Years. That's kind of how I feel about it. I know that stupid. And that, that could be one reason why they gave her up was because she was like illegitimate. Born of the force. Yeah, that she, yeah. I don't want to keep this kid. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't think, because like, I'm saying when her parents were nobody, you mm-hmm. could interpret, like, Kylo believes that to be the truth when he says it. But they can interpret, you can interpret that when they say nobody, I mean, she's not a well, solo she knows Skywalker. It too. She doesn't play, need you know? him to tell him. Exactly. She, she already knew that. She, yeah, she already knew that. But, like, nobody, okay, means mm-hmm. no Skywalkers, no solos, no Plagueises, no at Palpatine. But if she's of the Force, you also, know, if she's that moment when she's in the mirror and all she sees about for mm-hmm. her is stretching beyond her and stretching back, is she the mm-hmm. link of everything, mm-hmm. the Force? You know what I mean? Also, well, but she also right says that it was leading somewhere. Yeah. And we don't know what that's about. Exactly. And then it's, in the mirror, she saw fucking Ben. She totally saw Ben. And, and then it turned into her. Shadow. That it's, shadow was fucking Ben's Kylo Ren's shadow. And then it turned into her. It's amazing, too, how Watch much again. the choices of this movie now, like, you know, all the acting choices in the first movie, you get to see them now pay in off. a new yeah. light, and you get to yeah. see them pay off, mm-hmm. and you get to That's what pick makes up this things. movie good. Like, it you enriches can, when, the when first we, one. When we rewatch The Force Awakens now, every time she mentions her parents, yeah. there's, like, you can see in her performance now that there's sort of like this disbelief yeah. that they were ever going to come back and like yeah. that moment you when know? she's like big secret I'm top secret that was all she was that joking she was playing, you she's know? playing with BB-8 she's not everyone read so much into everything she said about her parents but it's like no like they, they were looking through what she said to what they wanted to, to see. what they right. wanted to see but now that we know no that's not what it was when you go back and you rewatch The Force Awakens it makes narrative sense mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah and yeah, I really like, need to do that. It does. It makes Before narrative I sense. Before I see Last Jedi again, I want to yeah. watch Force Awakens. Um, any final thoughts? Anything we have not unveiled about The Last Jedi? Possibly. You know what we didn't talk about at all in this entire podcast? What? Uh, no. Porks. The Porks. Porks. We didn't talk about the Porks at all. Oh, well, goddamn. Because everybody hates the Porgs because they're cute and cuddly. I love like the Star Porgs. Wars has never had cute and cuddly things. Before. I love the Porgs. I think they were perfectly unobtrusive. Yeah, they were fit into the right amount of time in the movie. They totally. were the right amount of shit in the movie. Chewie needed a. They're pet. never on screen for more than like five Chewie seconds. Chewie needed a pet. He's lonely. They, they did save yeah. the day though because they did spot the foxes, the little. The Volpistasis, whatever they're called, <laughs> coming out of the hole, and then Chewie noticed uh, after yeah. the pork. Ray and Chewie so noticed, yeah. really, the pork saved the responsible pork saved everybody, yeah. for right. save, lifting all those rocks. No, but like it's the, like Hey the, Hey and Moana is like <laughs> so pointless for the entire movie, and then the wait, pork, he pork, saves the day at the very end. The porks were exactly in the amount of movie that they needed to be. Right, exactly. They were not the Ewoks. They did not have their no, own storyline right. that sat there and annoyed people. They were in the right amount of movie. Well, I'm sure they annoyed some uh, some anti-vegans a little bit. <laughs> anti-vegans? Yeah. Or vegans? No, anti-vegans. Anti-vegans? Meat eaters? Ve- yeah, meat oh, eaters. Yeah, cause that, yeah, cause Cause, a, oh, because that, yeah, because of the, like, vaguely vegan message of... Of being, feeling yeah. guilty for killing the meat. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah my, my beef, though, is... If I were, He's in you the know, wild. What's funny like, is if you're looking at that moment, mm-hmm. that is a perfect summation of the force right there. What? Yeah, good and bad. Chewie eating the life porks. and death. Yeah, yeah. Violence yeah. and life. Death yeah. and life. Violence yeah. and peace. He needs it to live. He yeah. needs it to right? live. Yeah, that's true. But he fucking stabbed that little fucker. And he How did he kill him? Did he chop his little head off? Right. Did he twist well, his little no, neck? It's cold. Did he bite his little head no. off? What did Chewie do to that poor and kill it's him? Cool, though, yeah. so he must have. He like, must have, like banged it on something, right. like you no, know, like violent. I, like no. that is a perfect it, moment. That of natural causes. Not, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious though. But that is that <laughs> is a very that is a one of those little moments in the movie that absolutely represents the force. And then what happens mm-hmm. at the end? Him and the Porg mm-hmm. become friends, and yeah. it's that balance of yeah. light and dark. Because even though they became friends because he was eating somebody, and it's like, huh. He said he felt guilty or whatever he felt, and he felt like, okay, I'm just gonna take a pork. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just take a pork, and this pork's coming with me, mm-hmm. and they're being annoying. Like it doesn't matter. And oh I, God, I yeah. Love well, this. maybe maybe that's well. The pork's like infested. Yeah, but the he got the shit. rest of them out. Mm, he didn't see any more porks. You only saw that one pork left. So you think he cleared the infest, the full infestation of porks, and kept 
one pet for for yeah. itself. Yeah, I mean, that's it's really interesting. I'm now sure that they I think helped about, him. It's really interesting now that I think about it that like there's there's a ton of porgs that come into the Millennium Falcon, but only and one some of them either even nest there. Like how there's how how, a book. how good was their life on that island? Yeah, if they like. We're dying to go live on this fucking spaceship, you know. But I think the whole idea was that it was kind of a like <laughs> metaphor for like like the other porks, they kind of fit everywhere, and it was also right. like meant to be an homage to the puffins on the island because you know in the real scale, like Michael, it's a puffin sanctuary. So that's one of the reasons why they had porks because every puffin in a sequence that's flying overhead, they turned into a porg and oh, made yeah. a porg noise because that way they could get rid of the puffins and, yeah. and have and also incorporate them into the movie so they're not so distracting, right. you know. Um, and so, like, yeah, like, that's kind of, like, the, the puffins were everywhere. So I guess that's kind of, like, the idea. And also, yeah, like, the Millennium Falcon's always getting infested with shit. It's kind of, like, part of the fun of the Millennium Falcon. It's always falling right. apart. Right. Pieces of it are falling apart, or it's getting infested with weird shit, or it's landing in a worm, and, like, you know, it has to fucking find its place. Right. Yeah, like, that's the whole point of the fucking Millennium Falcon. So, I think they did Is that. Is it possible that since Han Solo died... Uh-huh. He's now been reincarnated as, a porg. as this porg. You figured it out. And now he's back in the Millennium Falcon. You figured it out. As his soul is destined to be. You figured it the and fuck out. And that's actually porg on. And now he gets to repay the life debt to Chewie. Well, as a porg. You figured it out. <laughs> you figured it out. He's a porg. Nailed it. Porgs yeah. are the best. Praetorium Guard is the best. Yeah. That's a good um, place to end it. I've been your host, Steven. Yeah. With me is the ever loving Kylo Ren shipper, Raylo shipper. I only re- ship him with himself. Yeah. Okay. Co fortress. You're a self shipper. Yeah. D Rock. I'm gonna start my own podcast so I just talk Gift about Raylo for hours a day. Gift Jamie. of the gods. Re gift of the gods. Re gift of the gods. Jedi <laughs> master. Jedi master. Oh my god, that's. I saw it like on Facebook. My grandpa posted this picture of himself in a hoodie, and one of one of his friends was like, "Oh, you should be in Star Wars." Aww. And then another one of his friends is like, "Yep, definitely a Star Wars guru." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, these old people—they're so it. cute." <laughs> <laughs> a guru. There's one of those laser swords. Like this over person there. has been alive for a really long time. Yeah. How do you not know that it's a Jedi? Jedi, exactly. <laughs> That's like basic. It's like, like the idea that there are people out there in this world who've never seen fucking Star Wars. I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> how have you been alive? This is like the the How I Met Your Mother episode. Of Marshall's yeah, like Marshall's how? like, you know, the people, only, the only people that never seen Star Wars, are people in Star Wars. That's because they lived them, Ted. They <laughs> lived the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I man, it's. Cr- I don't understand how no one sees. I, you don't see Star. I know someone at my work. She's yeah. like, I've never seen the original trilogy, and I'm just like, yeah. I know someone too. There's no one ever loved them. So I imagine. Yeah, right. <laughs> um. Remember, kids, when uh, working on your Raylo fan fiction, make sure that there aren't any porgs watching, because that is gonna kill everyone's erogenous zones. <laughs> they right? Kill their erogenous zones. <laughs> These become more nonsensical. Is that how, with every is, is that how sexual activity works? Yes. Yeah, that's yes, Kylo. Space My Martin. erogenous zones are inflamed. <laughs> Yes. What are these feelings? Thank you. Steve. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> oh, oh wait, hold on. There was something I didn't mention. Oh, oh my god. PPS. <laughs> yeah. Post. 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 Go. Post. Post. Go. Oh, I want to know. Anybody listening who's willing to to contribute, if you never do, but it's fine. If you do for some reason, tweet us at Vundacast or email us at Vundablog at gmail dot com. Let me know. Did you laugh? When Kylo said, "I'm sure you are," because I actually think it's meant to be slightly comedic. Oh, I remember now. In in that, so, and, and I want to know if you laughed or if you were just like, "Oh, this whiny idiot." The one thing Danny noticed that made us laugh very much. Oh yeah. Okay. Was the idea that if they had shown Kylo Ren turning on his lightsaber in the throne room, yeah, it would have looked like his dick, dick? Yeah. Yeah. just glowing on and turning. Yeah, red. I. I when, when you they, said that, I when the next time I rewatched it, I was looking for that, 
And it's off screen, but he's totally, he's holding it right and there. And his facial expression. And you see, yeah. you see it, you hear it, you... But you just see his face light up like it's yeah. on. Like, and he's looking at Ray. Yeah. And he's panting. He turns his to her. Mouth, his mouth is open and he's like, he's like breathing heavy and like she's breathing heavy. Yeah. It's like so... Yeah. I bet like, you... I, I, is, is that... Insert the, is that here. Oh my God. What? That's the only time he turns on his lightsaber that he doesn't do that ridiculous like stomp power oh, oh yeah like every yeah. other time yes. he does it he has to do like a stomp power well, except, up. except when he stomp. kills Han Solo when he turns on the lightsaber to kill him oh yeah true mm, yeah. but that's but he doesn't have like a fight you know? yeah. but that's still those yeah, are the yeah. only two those are the two, only times two moments when he's having he's an like, emotional always, yeah. when he's he having that. an emotional <laughs> connection with someone yeah. when he's not Ky- when he's not Kylo Ren when he's, he's Ben Solo that's when he fucking ignites his lightsaber like a normal person Ben Solo whips out his lightsaber like so his dad. So damn, did Ben Solo kill his dad? Fuck. Damn. So what if the Whoa. metaphor that when Luke caught him that night and he whipped out his lightsaber, it was just like a morning boner. <laughs> and Luke was confused. And Luke was like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> the huge wood. Dear, no, we can't find that. Wunderca- Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable oh, name. You're listening to the Voonda Cost. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger. You're listening to Voonda Cast. to the Vondacast.